learning outcome. After studying this module, you shall be able to know the classification of rifle arm, learn the importance of rifling. Introduction. Classification in general means sorting of the things into groups so that they can be easily and quickly identified and located. Any one of the common characteristics of rifled firearm may be used to group them. Most of the rifled firearms are factory made and are having definite and predetermined specifications hence fall under a group of standard weapon. Improvised rifled firearm are very common hence classification of the rifled firearm will remain restricted to standard firearms only. In case of smooth bore firearm the situation is quite different because the improvised shotguns are very commonly involved in murder in our country. Such known standard shotguns which are made both on commercial scale by criminals and on a small scale by individuals are commonly known as pipe guns, homemade weapons, country made firearm or improvised shotgun. Classification of rifle firearms. There are different sets of rifle weapons and their grouping details are explained further. First one is handguns. Pistols and revolvers, both of them are rifled firearms and can be operated with one hand and hence got the name of handguns. The revolver is basically a pistol but because of a revolving cylinder, it is known as a pistol revolver or a revolver. The revolving cylinder has a number of chambers for loading the cartridges which can vary from 4 to 7. The revolvers of different calibers are available. For example, 0 0.38 and 0 0.455. The barrel of a revolver is short and is effective only at short ranges. The barrel of a revolver which has six lengths and grooves and a left hand rifling twist is known as call type and that which has five lengths and grooves is known as right hand twisted which is further called as Smith and Wilson type. Pistols have a magazine which is enclosed in its grip. They are available from about 5 to 12 millimeters. Example 9 mm Mauser pistol and 7.6 mm pistols. Both pistols and revolvers have an effective range of about 100 meters. However, the weight and trigger pull is greater in case of revolvers because of revolving cylinder. The pistols may accommodate more than 8 cartridges which is not so in case of revolvers. A misfired cartridge can be easily removed from a revolver but not so in case of pistols. Next is types of handgun. The general types of handguns are in order of historical appearance. Each type can be classified into many subtypes. Some of these types can also be differently classified using the general difference between muzzle loading firearms that is loading from the front of the barrel and breech loading firearms that is loading from behind the barrel. First is single shot pistols. Single shot pistols are the simplest possible form of pistols and are known to have existed in 1365 AD. The earliest handguns were single shot muzzle loading guns with ignition provided by inserting match cord into a touch hole. 
as such they were initially nothing more than miniature cannons small enough to be handled improvements followed in subsequent centuries as various types of locks such as ignition devices were invented in the match lock the separate match cord was affixed to a spring loaded which could be trimmed by trigger in the wheel lock a mechanism analogous to that used in today's cigarette lighters replaced the smoldering match cord in the 17th century the flint lock which strikes a flint against steel appeared that is the flint lock amazingly reminded state of the art for some 200 years in the 19th century the percussion caps were developed followed shortly by modern integrated primer cartridges and hammers therefore traded their flint for firing pins an example of a single shot pistol is the flare gun although not intended to be a weapon many variants have been made single shot pistols continue to be manufactured today and are often used for target shooting they are also sometimes used for handgun hunting of a game including big game the most powerful handguns are capable of killing all game including elephants next one is multi barrel pistol not long after the very beginning of firearms inventors begin experimenting with multi barrel weapons in the quest for the ability to fire more than one shot before needing to reload not surprisingly all types of firearms were included in their efforts from volley guns to analogously devised handguns before anyone had developed a practical capability for delivering multiple loads to one barrel in quick succession which is how repeating fire is usually accomplished today gunsmiths were aggregating multiple loaded barrels into one place next one is shoulder rifle arms shoulder rifle arms are arms which can be fired using both the hands with the butt resting on the shoulder these are long barrel fire arms rifles fire a single bullet and are available in different calibers including 0.22 0.303 0.315 The most popular one is 0.3 rifles. Next is caliber. Caliber is the term associated with rifle firearms. The distance measured across the corresponding lands is known as caliber. Next we have the category of submachine guns or carbines. First one is carbine. This is term used for weapons that are versions of rifles or assaulted rifles but with a short barrel and lighter weight. Carbines are bigger than pistols but smaller versions of rifles. In the days of wild west mounted riders preferred a shorter and a lighter firearm. because these were easier to operate than full sized firearms when riding in more modern times people inside moving vehicles or in close quarter jungle combat preferred shorter weapons for the same reason since carbines have shorter barrels they lack in accuracy compared to full sized rifles or assault rifles while they use the same cartridges as their full sized cousins the shorter barrel also means reduced velocity bullets many assault rifles also comes in a carbine version for example the american m4 a carbine version of m16 assault rifle the israel galal sar 
a carbine version of Galil assault rifle. The Steyr AUG carbine based on Steyr AUG assaulted rifle. The carbine form uses a 16 inch barrel whereas the assault rifle uses a 20 inch barrel etc. Next is submachine gun. This is a weapon that shares some similarities with assaulted rifles but one key difference is that submachine guns are designed to fire pistol cartridges instead of intermediate cartridges. As a result of this, submachine guns are generally lighter and smaller than assaulted rifles and are about the same dimensions or smaller than carbines. Since they are pistol ammunition, they also have a less recoil and therefore can be fired from either the shoulder, the hip or even holding it like a pistol. The first weapon to use the term submachine gun was famous Tommy gun. This is a fully automatic weapon that fires 0.45 ACP cartridges. The same cartridges used by the Colt M1911 pistol. Another famous submachine gun from the World War II era is the British Ren gun, which is also a fully automatic weapon. Modern submachine guns such as Heckler and Koch MP5 are capable of selecting multiple firing modes. Submachine guns are more preferred for close range combat in urban environments because with lower powdered pistol cartridges there is a less risk of bullets penetrating through walls and hitting innocents on the other side. Next one is light machine guns. Wherein guns is a light machine gun. It is an automatic weapon with the caliber of 0.303. Next is machine guns. This is generally denotes a weapon that is capable of rapid fully automatic fire and carries a large supply of ammunition. Fully automatic fire means that the weapon will keep firing as long as the trigger is pulled and there is supply of ammunition available to it. Most machine guns fire either full sized or intermediate sized ammunition similar to rifles and assaulted rifles. Machine guns generally carry a large supply of ammunition in ammunition belts, drum, magazines or box magazines. This means that they generally have hundreds of cartridges available to them, unlike the 20 to 30 cartridges magazines used by assault rifles. They are also generally heavier than the rifles and assaulted rifles. Example of machine guns would be the Glatting gun, the Gardner gun, Bira gun. Modern machine guns includes the Browning automatic rifling, that is BAR, the British burn gun, the American Stoner 63, the Belgian FN Minimi, etc. Next we have Paradox Firearms. These are shotguns with an effective range of about 200 meters but have a small portion at the end of muzzle end of their barrels rifle. Example AK-47 and AK-74. AK-47 is a Russian assault rifle having caliber of 7.62 mm. The Russian design of the assaulted rifle AK-47 is being manufactured throughout the world. In varied modified versions and terrorists are making extensive use of them everywhere including India. Next we have AK-74. AK-74 has been extensively modified to Russia to give birth to this new assault rifle from AK-47. The caliber of AK-74 
has been reduced to 5.45 mm which has resulted in becoming it more lethal because it can cause severe wounds. Next we will learn about the characteristics of rifle firearms. Modern firearms have been classified in different manners by different experts using different characteristics of rifle weapons. None of the classification is comprehensive in nature. Classification are not quite systematic. The various characteristics forms of the basis of classification of small rifle firearms which are standard weapons. First one is bore characteristics. Whether the firearm is having a smooth bore, a rifle bore or a combination of both as in the case of paradox guns. Next is handling characteristics. Whether hands are used only for firing the weapons as in case of revolvers and pistols or hands as well as shoulders are used during the process of firing as in the case of rifles and shotguns. Pistols and revolvers are called handguns whereas rifles are termed short arms. Next is loading characteristics. Firearms are having different manner of loading which may be muzzle loading, breech loading or magazine loading. Action characteristics is the next. Firearms may have different action characteristics namely lever action, bolt action, self loaders or automatic. Next is characteristics of firing whether the firearm is capable of firing a single shot or is a repeater. Next is use of firearm. Whether the firearm is a service firearm or sporting firearm. Next is length of the barrel. Whether the barrel length is very small, small, large or very large. Although none of the classification system can be called really systematic and comprehensive. The bore characteristics may be preferred as in the case of classification of small arms. Next we will learn about the bore and the rifling. Before proceeding further, it is necessary to explain some of the terms namely bore, small arms, caliber and rifling etc. First one is small arm. Firearms which can be handled, moved and operated by a single hand are called small arms. Firearms that can project projectiles of less than 1 inch diameter are also called small arms. Next is bore of a gun. Bore is a term associated with smooth bore weapons. It is the number of indicating the size of the internal diameter of the barrel and represents the number of spherical balls of pure lead each exactly filling inside of the bowl which together makes up a pound that is 454 grams example 12 bore shotgun means its internal diameter is equal to the diameter of the spherical ball of pure lead of 1 by 12th of the pound. The internal diameter of the 12 bore shotgun barrel is 0 0.729 inches. Only exception is that when the diameter of a smooth bore barrel is less than 0 0.5 of an inch that is smaller than 32 gouache, the bore is designated in decimals of an inch. Example 0 0.41 inch musket. Next we have caliber of a rifle. Helical groups known as rifling are cut into the bore of a barrel of a firearm during production to increase the accuracy of that firearm. When the gun is discharged, these grooves cause the bullet to spin 
as it travels the length of the barrel and thus stabilizes the bullet during flight. At the same time, the expansion of fired cartridges and the high pressures propelling the bullet through the bore of the barrel presses and scrap the bullet against a rifling as it heads toward the muzzle. The fired bullet as a result will bear the negative impressions of the grooves in a rifled barrel. These marks are described by firearms examiners as land and groove impressions or land and grooves because the equipment used in the machining and finishing process of firearms production is inherently imperfect at the microscopic level. A machined rifle barrel will contain scratches, scraps and other minute nicks and flaws. These unique imperfections are exhibited through the subsequent use and discharges of the firearm as further abrasions of the barrel occurs and as a result of natural wearing processes such as rusting and corrosion. A lead or jacketed bullet propelled by high pressures at a great speed through the barrel of a given firearm when will they have impressed on its surface not only the general rifling characteristics of the barrel but also microscopic marks unique to that barrel. Marks not found in the barrel or rifling of any other firearm. Caliber is a term associated with rifled firearms. The rifled barrel have canal-like furrows called groves. In between the two adjoining furrow, there is a raised portion which is known as a land. Caliber is the actual measure of a bore diameter of the barrel between two opposite lands. The diameter is measured in decimals of an inch. Example 0.303 rifle and 0.38 revolver. The grooves in the rifle barrel are cut in the form of spiral in the inside of the bore. The spiral groove is obtained by gradually and uniformly turning the cutter while cutting the groove. This tuning is also known as twist. The number of grooves in a rifle varies from 2 to 20 to lens grooves and caliber etc. Next, we will learn about the importance of rifling. A rifle barrel consists of a number of raised and depressed portions. The raised portion which are known as lands and depressed portion which are known as grooves are positioned alternatively. The number of lands and grooves may vary from weapon to weapon and make have either left hand twist or right hand twist. The number, directions and twist of lands are the same as the corresponding measures of the grooves. The width may or may not be the same. The rifling gives gyrotatory motion to the projectile which continues even after the projectile has left muzzle of the firearm. The gyratory motion or spinning has two important effects on the bullet. First one is that it stabilizes the bullet flight with nose on position. Second is that it decreases air resistance. The stability is due to the fact as the bullet spins round its own longitudinal axis, the turning of the bullet sideways is avoided. It has been also found that cylindrical conocosidal bullets have greater stability. 
the decrease in the air resistance to the bullet in the flight is due to the fact that unlike the non-rotating bullets a rotating bullet does not develop increasing denser mass of the air continuously instead the spinning motions scatters the air in front throughout its passage the decrease in the air resistance has two effects first one is that the fall in the velocity is comparatively less over a given distance meaning thereby that effective striking velocities are maintained for a much longer range the second one is that the path of the bullet flight or trajectory obtained is flatter resulting in better aim over longer ranges rifling is useful as it increases the aiming range many folds example from about 100 meters to several hundred meters another advantage of rifling is that it has reduced weight as well as dimensions of service projectile to a very large extent next we will learn in a brief about the classification on the basis of bore characteristics the classification of small arms that is smooth bore and rifle on the basis of their bore characteristics small arms are divided into three categories smooth bore firearms paradox firearms and rifle firearms the smooth bore firearms are further divided into muzzle loading firearms and breech loading firearms let us discuss the classification of muzzle loading firearms which are further divided into single barrel muzzle loading guns that is sbml guns second is double barrel muzzle loading guns that is dbml guns and the third one is multiple barrel muzzle loading guns that is mbml guns on the other hand we have breech loading guns these are also further divided into three subcategories first one is single barrel breech loading guns that is sbbl guns second one is double barrel breech loading guns that is dbbl guns and the third one is multiple barrel breech loading guns that is mbbl guns the double barrel muzzle loading guns are further divided into two categories that is the two barrels side by side horizontally or two barrel one above another the rifle firearms are again further divided into shoulder arms and the handguns let us discuss shoulder arms in detail shoulder arms have further three category single shot rifles repeating rifles and semi automatic and automatic rifles the semi automatic rifles are further divided into submachine guns light machine guns and machine gun we have on the other hand handguns which are further classified into pistols and revolvers the pistols are further subcategorized as short recoil and long recoil and the revolver is further classified as single action and double action which are further brick frame solid frame and removable cylinder summary Rifled firearms are classified into handguns, shoulder guns, submachine guns, light machine guns, machine guns, paradox firearm AK-47 and AK-74. Rifling give gyratory motion to the bullet. The grooves in the rifle barrel are cut in the form of spiral from inside of the bore. The gyratory motion or spinning has two important effect on the bullet number one is it stabilizes the bullet flight with nose on position 
second it decreases air resistance 